You are listening to pastthink.com audiobook. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. Chapter 55. Shwanda convinces his wife to flee Wu, and her cunning saves them. Kong Ming drives Zhou Yu to fury for the second time. Seeing Shwanda turning pale with fright, the housekeeper reassures him that he has nothing to fear. Not very ladylike, is it, though, comments Shwanda. When this is reported to Lady Sun, she laughs and wonders why a man who has spent half his life in battles would be frightened of weapons. But to put him at ease she has the majority removed and tells her women guards to put aside their swords. And the couple spend that night in a passionate embrace. Needless to say, news of the disastrous outcome of their plot, an actual wedding, is sent by Sun Quan to Zhou Yu. Sun asks him for advice on what on earth to do next. After a long time of contemplation, Zhou Yu writes to Sun Quan with a new plan. In his letter he basically points out that they need to tame this man of action, and that the best way to do this is to make his life at Nanshu so delightful, and so sensual that he will forget all about the affairs of state. Sun Quan immediately sets to work and has the palace redecorated and the gardens landscaped. Women musicians are dispatched to the palace, along with many rich gifts of gold, jade and silk. The queen mother, thinking that this shows how well the whole family is getting on, is delighted. As for Shwanda he frankly just sinks into this life of luxury. After so many years of hardship he enjoys himself, and all thought of returning to Jingzhou soon fades. While this is going on, Zhao Zilong and his men fill their time with sports, entertainments, wine, women and song. However, as month extends into month and the end of the year draws near, Zilong remembers what Kong Ming said. When that happens, open the second bag. No sooner has he read the second document than he goes to see Shuanda. My lord, says Zilong, this morning news came from Kong Ming that Chao Chao, bent upon revenge, has set off with 500,000 men to take Jingzhou. Kong Ming asks that you return at once. Well, I'll go and discuss this with my wife, replies Shwanda, whereupon Zilung says if he does she is bound to tell him not to go. We need to leave immediately. But Shwanda will not be dissuaded. Entering Lady Sun's room, Shwanda weeps and falls down before her, and pretends that he has suddenly realized he has failed to pay due respect and regard to his parents, and to make the ritual sacrifices to his ancestors. With the new year almost upon us, I'm overwhelmed with distress at this, he claims. Don't try and fool me, replies Lady Sunday, I know perfectly well what this is all about. Zhao Zilong has told you that Jingzhou is about to be taken. You're being called back, and this frankly was just a poor excuse in order for me to let you go. With no option left, Shuanda says, let me speak honestly. If I stay here, and Jingzhou is lost, I'll be a laughing stock. But I don't want to leave you. This is my dilemma. I'm your wife and I'll go where my lord goes. This may be how you see things, but I cannot believe that your mother or brother will agree. Just have compassion on me, and let me go for a brief time. Lady Sun tells him to pull himself together, as she will ask her mother's permission, but Shwanda says her brother won't agree to her leaving. Then Lady Sun comes up with an idea. When we go to offer the New Year sacrifices, I'll say you wish to pay your respects to your ancestors, and that we'll go to the river to do this. Then we can escape from there with no one watching. What do you think? Kneeling before her, Shwanda says emotionally, If you will do this for me, I will never ever forget it, whether I am dead or alive. But we must keep this absolutely secret. Shwanda tells Zhao Zilong to lead his men to the main road on New Year's Day, and be ready to leave. So it is that on New Year's Day AD 210 Sun Quan hosts a huge celebration. Lady Sun and Shwanda enter and kowtow before the Queen Mother. Lady Sun says that her husband's parents and ancestors lie buried in the north in Zhuo County, and that being unable to get there has caused him much grief. Today he wishes to go to the river and face the north to offer his prayers for that holy place. We have come to let you know. The Queen Mother is deeply touched by such filial piety. I know you never had the chance to meet your parents-in-law, so you should accompany him, for this is fitting. 
And so, kowtowing once more, the pair make their escape. With Lady Sun traveling in her carriage and Shwanda riding alongside, they meet up with Zhao Zilong and his men and set off as fast as they can. It is later that evening that Sun Quan realizes they have escaped. He orders Chen Wu and Pan Zhang to set off immediately with 500 elite warriors to catch them. But not long after they have left, Ching Pu and Zhang Zhao point out how in awe of her all the commanders are for her knowledge of martial arts. They suggest that others with a sure sign of his authority are sent to finish the job. So, giving his official sword to Jiang Qin and Zhou Tai, he orders them to stop the runaways and cut off their heads, or they will be executed instead. These two set off in pursuit with a thousand men. Ahead of them Shwanda and Lady Sun are racing forward, barely resting their horses or men. They are almost at the border with Chai Sang, when they can see rising up behind them the clouds of dust from their pursuers. Zilong urges them to go on and he will form a rearguard. But at that precise moment, they find their path blocked. Zhou Yu suspected a plot, and sent Su Sheng and Ding Feng with 3,000 men to block the road. With troops in front and troops behind, all appears lost. But at this point Zhao Zilong remembers the third bag with its secret document and opens it. He passes it to Shwanda, who reads it, and then runs to Lady Sun's carriage. My lady, I've something to tell you in confidence. Whatever it is, keep nothing back, says the lady. The idea of our marriage was just a plot originally by Zhou Yu and your brother to trap me so they could take Jing Zhou. If that failed then they were going to murder me. You were just bait to catch me. I came because of your fame but have fallen in love with you. Yesterday I was told of a new threat, so I made up the excuse of needing to go to Jing Zhou. How lucky and blessed am I that you chose to come with me. Now the troops are hunting us and closing in, and the only person who can save me is you. But if you will not do this, then I will die here before you to honor your kindness in coming with me. Lady Sun is furious at this and rails against her brother, whom she says she never wants to see again. Now, leave this to me, she says. So saying, she has her carriage moved to the front line, and, looking out, she calls out to the two officers sent to block the way by Zhou Yu, Su Sheng and Ding Feng, to attend her. So, are you rebels now? Meekly the two stand before her, their weapons laid upon the ground. Not at all. We've our orders from General Zhou to be here to prevent Shuanda leaving. That worthless rebel Zhou. What has our family ever done to deserve such treatment? Not only is Shuanda a member of the imperial family, but he is also my husband. My brother and mother know we are going to Jingzhou. So why are you here? To rob us. The two browbeaten officers profess that they are not rebels or thieves, and that this is not their plan. They are just following orders. This does not impress Lady Sun, who retorts, so you fear the general more than me. Let me tell you that he may hold you in fear of your life, but I hold that same power over him. She rages on for some time against Joe. The end result is that the cowed officers agree to let her pass. Not long after they have moved off, two other officers, those sent initially by Sun Quan, Chen Wu and Pan Zhang, ride up. They tell an alarmed Su Sheng and Ding Feng that they have explicit orders to prevent the escape of Shuanda, and Lady Sunday horrified at their mistake, Su Sheng and Ding Feng with the other two gallop off after the fast disappearing troop and carriage. Shwanda soon notices the clouds of dust and realizes the pursuit is on again. And once again Lady Sun takes control. She tells him to ride on for the river with 300 of his men while she and Zhao Zilong deal with this new threat. No sooner do the four officers see Lady Sun than they leap from their horses and bow deeply. Lady Sun barks, Chen Wu, Pan Zhang. What are you doing here? We've been instructed by Lord Sun to ensure you both return. For a moment, Lady Sun looks at them in distasteful silence. Then, sighing, she says, It is the fault of people like you that problems have arisen between my brother and me. It's not as if this is an elopement, I'm after all married to Lord Shwanda. My mother has agreed to this trip, as indeed has my brother. 
We're simply fulfilling our ritual and filial duties. So why do you have these weapons? Is it your plan to kill us? This speech just leaves the four generals shamefaced and also contemplating the fact that, whatever else happened, Lady Sun and Lord Sun would always be sister and brother, that this trip is sanctioned by the Queen Mother, and that Lord Sun, filial son that he is, would never gainsay his own mother. What if tomorrow he repents and changes his mind? Guess who would get the blame then? It might be best to just show some kindness now. So the four bow deeply and quietly retreat. A little while after this, the four see riding towards them at a furious pace the second troop sent by Sun Quan, commanded by Jiang Qin and Zhou Tai. Crying out, Have you seen Xuanda? The four reply that they passed them this very morning. When they are challenged as to why they did not detain them, the four relate their encounter with Lady Sunday. The two newcomers tell of the sword and special commission Sun Quan has given them to execute the pair, and the other officers say that the couple are already well on their way. The six officers decide that Su Sheng and Ding Feng will ride back to Zhou Yu and tell him what has happened. They will request the fastest boats possible to race after them. The other four will chase the fugitives along roads and try to catch them. Whatever you do, says Jiang Qin, don't let them speak. Kill them before they can argue. Meanwhile, Xuanda, Zhao Zilong and Lady Sun have reached the edge of the river. But not a single boat is to be found to ferry them over to safety. Don't worry, says Zilong, I am sure Kong Ming will have thought of something. But this does little to reassure Xuanda. He finds his thoughts drifting back to his recent life of luxury, and he gently weeps. As a poet has said about this couple. Here on these shores, east and west wed. Comforts and luxury were theirs for the taking. Who could have foreseen the drastic choice she would make? Choosing noble Shwanda and undoing plots? The sound of the pursuing troops comes clear on the air, and Shwanda's heart grows heavier and heavier. Suddenly, coming down the river are twenty ships, and Zilong shouts with relief that this is the gift of grace they needed to escape. Only when they and the five hundred have all swiftly embarked do they spot someone dressed like an ordinary Daoist with a headband in one of the boats. It is Kong Ming. When the four generals arrive breathless at the riverbank, Kong Ming laughs and shouts, I planned all this ages ago, so you go back and tell Zhou Yu, no more seduction plots. And so saying, despite arrows being fired at the retreating ships, they sail safely away. Or do they? For suddenly the air is rent by a great cry, and round the bend in the river comes Zhou Yu with his navy, sailing as fast as they can. Kong Ming urges his oarsmen on to renewed effort, and they land on the north shore just ahead of the southern navy landing as well. Shuanda, Lady Sun and all those who are with them, including Kong Ming, leap onto horseback and charge off into the woods. Close behind comes Zhou Yu and his men. Just as it seems they will overtake the fugitives, Guan Yu bursts out of the woods at the head of his men. It is, of course, one of Kong Ming's traps. Zhou Yu and his men turn in horror and flee back to their boats and just manage to escape. I have failed again, bemoans Zhou Yu. What am I going to say to Lord Sun? His distress makes him collapse unconscious on the boat deck, and his wound opens up again. Will he survive? Who knows?